Hello viewers, recently I went on Gran Turismo 7 and I found this. A group 4 race around Le Mans without the chicanes. On first inspection it seems like a fairly innocuous race, but it quickly turned out to be one of the best races we have ever seen in Gran Turismo 7 multiplayer. And that's because of this, dynamic weather. It's a feature that hasn't really featured in the game, at least in the multiplayer section. But finally, Polyphony have done their homework and managed to bring it out to play and my goodness it did a good job now as you can see the moisture meter is slowly filling up so this race began with some rain and therefore the track was partially wet and for those that are unsure about this dynamic weather basically every race is slightly different so if it rains on the first race it might not rain on the next one and that unpredictability is what made this race so enjoyable and so fun no two races were the same and i know that's true anyway but in the dry they can feel very very repetitive but with this mode with this dynamic weather enabled it felt very different and the game very, uh, very much felt alive now mulsan corner here was alive to the sound and the noise of many cars hitting the gravel as you can see and the wall as I'm going to smash into the wall on the exit and it looked like many cars misjudging their braking points and therefore going wide and that is something you have to pretty much judge on the fly uh, with the dynamic weather whether or not you have to brake a bit earlier because of the wet conditions and here as you can see classic example pretty much half the pack sliding wide spinning round hitting the wall as a result of all of that, I'm going to end up in ninth position. We do have to serve this 0.5 second penalty. There's going to be a Viper going wide into the gravel there. And we're going to temporarily move up into eighth just before we serve this penalty. Now, this lobby was very interesting because I joined it on a Sunday night after being in the Philippines for all of the week. So I managed to get on just in time before this race ended and i'm really grateful that i managed to get back in time because it was such a fun race and it was full of very very quick players um the, the driver in the lancer is a former world champion we've got trl lightning behind me another world champion and then world tour players such as will murdoch going through there so a very very talented grid three abreast going into the final chicane which was probably not ever going to work but interesting content nonetheless end of the first lap then will Murdoch there getting uh, shown wide I'm going to move back up into P8 now the thing about this changing weather conditions so you have to make constant adjustments about how you drive uh, by constantly looking at the weather constantly looking at the moisture meter for lack of a better name of it to judge you know do I need to brake earlier do I need to uh, go slower through the corners this is something you have to constantly judge and on this race it seemed as though it was getting drier but going into the more sand breaking point there was a small amount of moisture on the on the racing line here going into this corner someone else going very wide not sure what happened there i took that corner very badly i'm going to lose a couple of positions that just shows you how um how good the the lobby quality was you take one bad corner you lose three positions but I was having fun. That's the crucial thing here. Up into towards the uh, final chicanes here, lap number two, and overtaken once again by B Racer. And then I got hit from behind and I tried to cut the corner and boom, I'm dead. Or at least my hopes of anything decent in this race are dead. Back down to 14th. And after serving a penalty here at the end of lap number three, I was, well, in last. There it is. P15 out of 15, a very sorrow, uh, sorrowful sight for Super GT. And there was no weather to save me. I was hoping that maybe some rain could return and basically uh, turn the whole track into an ice rink. Didn't happen. So I came through a couple of laps later to finish dead last in a very sorry display of driving. Now, my main conclusion from that was my qualifying wasn't good enough, so I improved my qualifying lap to a 
which as a result put me P3 on the grid for this race and hopefully therefore would give me a much better chance of success. Now as you can see the next race came with different weather conditions. This one quite a nice blue sky here above Le Mans. Checking the weather radar nothing quite coming up just yet but over the course of a five lap race around here looking at about a 20 minute race it can very much change any time between now and the end so we do have to be quite vigilant and uh, make sure that we don't get caught out so at the end of uh, so at the beginning of the the mall sand straight here it's a kind of a weird dynamic because it's such a long straight here the mall sand straight basically just bumped after each other down the straight and i did think this would be an interesting dynamic when i saw this race come up Route 4 cars around this track. It has never been a combination as far as I'm aware. Certainly not in GT7, but I don't think I ever remember it coming up in Gran Turismo Sport either. So it did it did make for an interesting race, there's no doubt about that. Uh, even before you consider the dynamic weather. So here, you know, just bump drafting each other down the back straight, kind of reminiscent of races at uh, SSRX we're pretty much doing this for the entirety of the race but eventually we are going to get ourselves towards a breaking point and I thought I didn't know which side to go so I felt like okay we're gonna go to the outside and hope that we don't get pushed on by one of the cars behind if anything we go a little bit deep here bit of contact not the nicest overtake of all time but as a result of all that anarchy we are going to end up in the lead and this is my chance to try and escape, which is really difficult to do if the pack is in your slipstream range. There's not much you can do. Even if you're out of slipstream range, they're probably going to catch you up by bump drafting each other. Now, our good friend here, Valerio Gallo, comes through in the Bugatti Veyron. The Veyron was the quickest car in a straight line for this race. It wasn't necessarily the quickest car through the corners or on lap time. But it was good on the straight, there's no doubt about that, as you'd probably expect from the Veyron. Now, as you can see, back in third, fourth, fifth, they had some sort of disagreement on the exit of Arnage there. And that meant myself and Valerio in second broke clear. And this was my chance to try to establish a decent lead in this race, at least with Valerio. Try to pull away as a duo and get clear of the rest of the pack. Easier said than done, as Le Mans is quite uh, well known, quite fabled for its extremely strict track limits. So you have to be very careful around here, you have to be very, very careful indeed. You have to push the limits as much as possible because that's how you get the speed, but then of course, you don't want to go one millimetre over the line because the stewards will definitely be slamming a penalty your way. So lap number two then onto the Mortan straight and Valerio as you can see we were we were the best team of all time bomb drafting each other down the straight maximizing the pace it was just a beautiful sight I felt like the only thing that could stop me was the weather which was slowly creeping in as you can see so it was hard to judge this was a tricky position that I hadn't been in before first place trying to go into a braking zone not knowing where I should brake so I brake quite quite early quite safe to make sure I don't go flying off into the wall and on this occasion it was okay and you know if you're behind you can just kind of judge your braking point based on the car in front but thankfully the rain shower passed and I was still alive which is quite miraculous and well, it's just good because otherwise this video wouldn't have been made. I wouldn't have been able to make it if I had passed away in the rain shower. So there's some content for you as well. That's always good news. So through our Arnage, lap number three, just over halfway through the race. And I think we had a really solid position here. Um, I, I mean, I don't mean just first, but I mean the gap we had to third. Except this moment happened a couple of laps later. And what that, what that is going to do is hand me 1.5 second penalty. And yeah, very, very frustrating. 
Um, that I mean, that does it. Doesn't even do it justice, really. How frustrated I was. And here, another mistake. Just creeping beyond the white lines on the exit of that kerb. Two seconds of penalties. And Valerio, you know, he, he was willing to work with me to a to a point. But when he saw that I had the penalties, there's not much he can do. I'm beyond help by this point. So he thought, okay, I'm going to go through. And that Veyron was quick. I mean, I'm in the slipstream here. And I'm barely keeping up. It took me the majority of the straight to get back in the toe and properly give him a bump. Uh, so all I can do here really is bump draft him, stay behind, and then maximise the gap to the people behind so that when I serve the penalty, I lose the least amount of positions possible. But let's see. You see there's um, about two and a half seconds back to uh, Key there in uh, third place. But you've got Key, Conster and TRL Lightning. Quite a formidable group of players to be hunted down by. And ultimately, after serving the two-second penalty, we're going to lose three positions to the three I just named. There goes Key. Here comes Consta and Lightning. And I've thrown away a potential win. Uh, at worst, it was going to be a P2, you would have thought, from that position. And, well, it was just a disaster class, really. Here's a, an absolute a lesson, a textbook lesson in how not to race. Going from first, then I was a sitting duck on the back straight. Dropping down to seventh. Also got another penalty which I served here and uh, ending up in P7 after that crossing the line a couple of laps later this guy wanted me to finish P6 sixth place I felt like no I, my, my deserved position there was 7 now for this next one as you see starting off with some rain but annoyingly I forgot to change the tyres from the hard which it defaults to and that was really annoying because the soft tyre is the better tyre, it's the tyre you want uh, if you're going for the soft, if you're going for dry tyres that is. Now through Dunlop, all I could do here was try my hardest and hope that it was good enough up against everyone else with a various range of tyres. Now onto the back straight, it was quite uh, quite loose feeling through here as you can see myself and got max power almost sending it into the wall. But uh, I do actually get a penalty after after that. And this was a really interesting moment. Going into Mulsanne and, well, literally firing it in as hard as possible. And it turns into something more resembling a bowling alley. Once again, facing the wrong way, race over. Or was it? I was in fifth at this point. And once again, uh, the breaking entry zone into Indianapolis. Turning into an ice rink. So all I could do on lap 5 was battle for 10th. And to be fair, with the hard tyre, it was always going to be a hard race to compete. So I tried my hardest, going past this Veyron, to get 10th back. But then, frustratingly through here, getting a poor exit, the Veyron has managed to get on my left-hand side. There's not much I could do to defend against that now. And then, as a result of that, the door was open, the Jaguar went through and I was back down to 12. So I tried my hardest on this one, on this race. It was still fairly fun trying to challenge people on the worst tyres, but it was not meant to be in the end, as you can see, finishing 12th. So what I thought I'd do is change the livery, which is obviously where I was going wrong. So I got this beautiful yellow livery, then made sure that I was going to have the soft tyres by default. Before jumping back in for my final race, Hopefully, it'll be fourth time lucky and I could deliver something resembling a good result this time around. Let's take a look. So this time on the soft tyre, as you can see, it's a fairly grey and dismal looking sky above us here in Le Mans. But at the moment, there is no rain to report of, no moisture on the ground, at least not that we've seen. Now, one thing I would say about the dynamic weather is that perhaps you should be able to access a weather forecast before you jump into the race something along those lines because otherwise you don't really always know what tires to put on um, but sometimes you know that's 
the fun of it, I suppose. The fact that it's a bit mysterious and you're kind of half guessing. Sometimes you can tell from the warm up, but Le Mans being such a big track, you can't always tell what the rest of the track is like. Um, but uh, onto the Mulsanne in P5. We've not changed any position so far. This one is going to be a bit more of a uh, stable race, at least to begin with. So I felt what, what we'll do is I'll bump draft uh, Max Power through, and we'll go through together past the GTR. And this is the weird element of this uh, of this kind of race, and this is something that is prevalent in Gran Turismo. For those who aren't actually really familiar with Gran Turismo, and you get a lot of bump drafting on these tracks with long straights, most notably Special Stage Route X, which I've made quite a number of videos about. But uh, down the Le Mans full straight, which is quite a rare circuit to come up, um, it's come out in force once again, the bump drafting. So Max Power tries it around the outside, it isn't going to quite work on that occasion. And I'm going to settle into P3. So solid progress so far. We've still got, you know, the majority of the race left to try to overhaul the top two. This is lap two, bumping down the back straight. I do my time. If I pull out to the outside here, probably won't get an overtake. I'll fall out of line, as you can see. It's basically a, uh, a line of cars bumping each other up the straight. Very, very strange sight. So all I can do is wait for the braking zone, which is just coming up. Now I'll try to pull out and maybe get an outside move here. So let's see if I can do it. Onto the brakes, trying around the outside of the guy in second place here. And in fact, I just turn in way too late. Get on the power a bit too late as well. And in trying to gain the position, I'm going to lose one and move down to fourth. Uh, so four laps left to go. You know, not ideal to move uh, down a position, but plenty of time to try to recoup that position plus more so once again we're going to try to have a bit of teamwork here this is lap number three then and let's see what we can do now as you can see fusa just in front indicated to the left for okay i'm going to follow you through and i'm going to bump you through and we're going to work as a team to try to overhaul these uh, top two players and we did exactly that very nice tactical play from the two of us bumping past and moving up into first and second we were third and fourth so it's a fairly good deal i would say and we both gained out of it so we formed a nice little alliance there nice little team team play going on um, but as we head down towards the multan breaking point i was plotting my treachery as we finally get there and i felt like okay uh, enough is enough i'm gonna go for the lead of the race and there we go, we've done it. Up into first place with, let's say, a lap and a third left to go. Are we going to be able to keep this one through to the end? It's going to be really tricky and difficult. I'm going to do my utmost to try to win this race and bring home a fantastic victory for the boys and girls back at the Dodge factory in the United States. So through the chicane, end of lap number four, Crossing the line to begin lap 5 of 5, the final lap of the race. Fastest lap of the race goes in, 356.3. Laying down a marker for the rest of the pack. But we're going to try and escape down the Mulsan. It's not realistically going to be possible, as they are within slipstream range. Now, this is where things partially unravel for me. As you can see here, flying onto the straight. It's a four-horse race now, away at the front. We've narrowed it down from five to four. We are going to get bump drafted here by Fusa. Good news. But I think I make a mistake here as we look behind in just a moment and you see two lines begin to form with the uh, car on the outside. And I felt like moving over to give that car slipstream to create some anarchy in the group behind. But then as a result of that, I think, I think Fusa wanted to go around the outside of me as I kind of betrayed him again for the second time. And uh, as a result of that, I had no alliance and I quite quickly lost three positions, moving down to fourth. And uh, this does not come at an opportune time because this is the final lap of the race and we do not have many corners or straights left to, write, uh, to try to rectify this situation. 
So it's getting away from me at this point. We need to do something quite drastic if we want to get back onto the podium, uh, let alone win the race. So let's see what we can do as we head towards the Indianapolis braking zone. Uh, so we're going to form into a 2x2 two two formation here. And we've got the inside through the right kink and quite easily and convincingly take P3. Can we now pay, uh, take P2, the inside of Fusa, into the braking zone of Arnage, up behind the GTR? And Fusa actually takes a really sensible line to go quite deep to retain second place. And this is the final long straight of the circuit. So this is quite a crucial section of the track because it leads into the Porsche curves from which it's actually very difficult to overtake. Fusa is going to go for this move and I'm going to attempt it. I'm going to at least take a half look here into the Porsche curves. I think better of it. That was not going to be a very um, good place to go for a move three abreast. Probably would have resulted in something fairly catastrophic. I'm sat here in P3 with barely about three corners left to go and it isn't looking too good except here Fusa just goes a tiny bit wide I would say three pixels if I counted that correctly and he gets a one second penalty he bails out in, uh, in fury at the steward's decision but I'm now in P2 the Nissan GTR is going to go in way too hot get a horrible exit and on the exit of the final corner we're going to cross the line in P1. There it is. Incredible scenes here at Le Mans. The greatest race you will ever see. And I have no doubt about that. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. And I shall catch you next time. Goodbye.